industrial sociology explain the history of sociology explain the industrial sociology perspective describe the models of industrial sociology explain the major types of market society relationships describe the modern industrial needs sociology has always been a highly interesting field of study it has found its uses from very early times in all the fields especially when some emergency situations have arisen the sociologists from all over the world have come forward to understand the human behaviors mind or brain is the most complex of all the devices made by god it has working is still a mystery at large to the mankind how humans behave in different sets of situations have perplexed scholars all over the world though studies have been made and some models have been prepared it always remains a challenge and fascination that how human brain will react to certain situations industrial sociology used to be an integral field of research in sociology but with the increase of globalization changing environment of the workplace and rising competition has made industrial sociology a separate field scholars and academicians from all over the world are studying the behavior of humans in the workplace many big industries and corporate sectors are funding these studies because after all the greatest asset of any company is the employees it has better the working staff better the profits by definition industrial sociology is the study of behavior and the motivations of the people at the workplace it examines the directions and the implications of trends in technological change globalization labor markets work organizations managerial practices and employment relations things affect the employee not only in the workplace but also with the home with family members also comes under this field of study problems oriented by sociology are urbanization poverty family breakdown racial ethnic minorities industrialization inequality and crime a brief history of sociology in the early 1600s the demographic and census activity was increased this was done to ensure the better availability of data when these records were maintained it helped in solving the urban problems of crime and pauperism during the period of 1830s august comte gave this field a name called sociology and placed it among the academic disciplines in the last of the 19th century emil durkheim promoted human behaviors structure and process and society as a set of functional relationships in 1875 sociology made a new benchmark when it became a discipline in yale university usa the final golden milestone came in the history of sociology when the international sociology association was established as a part of unesco industrial sociology an understanding of the term importance of industrial sociology it can be used to define various industrial relations it can be used for which a highly integral part of social political as well as economic change it can be used to define the trade relations existing between the different institutions of the society or different societies it can be taught to managers so that these people who handle the workforce are better prepared to manage employees trained sociologists can help in industrial research and making the workplace better it helps in defining and determining the various possible relations inside and outside of the country industrial sociology recognizes four basic elements the organization of workers and managements the state the management and the workers 
while there are many factors that influence the behavior of the people the majority of these factors in the industry can be broadly classified into social institutions government trade unions labor codes etc character to study the role of worker unions and the other institutions method to focus on collective bargaining of the workers participant in the industrial relation schemes contents pay hours of work leave with wages health safety disciplinary actions and layoffs industrial sociology perspectives now since the workplace the industries and its practices are not a cup of tea for everyone but a very complex work arena with lots of variables therefore industrial sociology perspectives are also highly complex the sociological perspectives now can be divided into three fields respectively the functionalist perspective marxism symbolic interactionism the functionalist perspective studies how society is how social institutions meet the needs of the people and how the industry is getting affected or affecting these balances the functionalist perspective is based on the thinking that societies are of specialized structure that is the family religion economy politics social institutions etc and each of these institutions plays an essential role in maintaining the balance of the society as a whole these specialized structures or cells as we can call them are interdependent they cannot exist without each other under normal society conditions they work together to promote harmony and stability functionalist stress on the importance of consensus among members of the society and the potentially harmful effects of sudden change in the groups or society hence we study functionalism in detail we can come to the conclusion that functionalism is against the support of the status quo or rule of one person the marxian field studies how people use or misuse the power within and across the social system so when we study this field we come to know that this view is based on the belief that the structure of the society is a result of competition of scarce resources this had been the view point that had led to clashes in many industries marx the thinker who researched this theory held that the capitalism divides society into two classes those who control the means of production and those who have to sell their labor though this field is in continuous research almost all its view points hold a solid ground in the industry contemporary conflict scholars who are researching in this field have broadened the scenario to take into account the cross cutting interest of the diverse group in the society today and for the emergence of the world capitalist system the basic belief of the theorist of conflict thinking is that to understand why a behavior pattern exists in a society it must also be determined who deserves from the pattern and how such persons maintain their status of the power symbolic interactionism studies the cumulative effect of individual actions and interpersonal relationship in everyday behavior now the study can be taken in the scenario of an industry and also learn how the individual actions in the workplace and the individual relationships between the employees affects the performance of the company the theoretical perspective is based on the belief that everyday interaction is a way people interpret everyday events and relationships in a nutshell the emphasis is on the symbolic meanings that the people attach to encounters that happen to them every day models of industrial sociology there have been many models practices from the early 18th century to construct a model on which the market industries of the nations can be based 
to prove them with the best of the trends. Some of the models are below for a better understanding. These models have been developed over hundreds of years by scholars and have stood the test of times. They may have failed in certain countries, but they have made a very good example. The classic liberalism model. This model is a political thinking and belief which is a part of liberalism. It lays emphasis on securing the freedom of individual by limiting the power of the government. This philosophy was developed by Adam Smith during the Industrial Revolution. It advocates civil liberties with a limited government under the rule of law. In a nutshell, this model believes in freedom of market from feudal constraints. It also lays emphasis that the state must ensure a sound education system, a strong and standing army and justice for all. Its ultimate aim is to lead the world market and world peace. This model was strongly against monopolies as it believed that monopolies destroyed the market. It also believed that markets should be run on a moral basis and honesty should be the main thing. Early Socialism This model was developed mainly by Robert Owen. It is an economic model whose highlight was social ownership of the means of production and cooperative management of the economy. This model consists of a system of production and distribution organized to satisfy economic demands and human needs. This also helps so that goods and services are directly put for use instead of profit driven by accumulation of wealth. This was developed due to the working class political movement to gain more benefits from the same. It laid stress on the fact that industries should provide proper well-maintained campuses and well-laid housing colonies for the workers. It also laid emphasis on the need of education of children of those workers. Since the worker is working to give profit to the industries, hence it is the responsibility of industries to provide for the education of the children of the workers. Opening cooperative shops for the workers was also an influential guideline of this model where it laid stress on the fact that daily need things and food items should be available to the workers at subsidized rates. This model also encouraged motivation through the development of social relationships. Anarchist this model was primarily a belief that was developed by Pierre Joseph Proudhon. It is a philosophy that advocates stateless societies based on non-hierarchical free association. Anarchism holds the state to be undesirable, unnecessary or harmful. This is the only model that never offered a fixed set of doctrine for a single world view. It draws heavily from many schools of thought and theories. Anarchist scholars and thinkers opposed centralization of power in one place. They thought that this would lead to suppression and exploitation of other people. This model also opposes reliance on the state. It advocates that people should work for themselves instead of depending upon the state. This model is for formation of cooperatives and self-help organizations so that people can help themselves and can witness growth. They were extremely much against the private ownership because they believed that private owners are usually the exploiters. This model proposed ways of overcoming contradictions of capitalism as well as bureaucracy. Marxist This model was developed by Karl Marx. This model is used for social and economic world view. This model is upon materialist interpretation of historical development. It stated that without capturing the state, the cooperative societies established by the common masses cannot be a success. These parties will be the carriers of the Marxist ideas. They envisaged that they would become a powerful stream among socialism by the end of 19th century. This model ends, begins and bases itself 
on just one field of thinking analysis of material condition major type of market society relationship now after the study of some famous models of the industrial sociology we will study some major market society relationships oligopolic capitalism in this market form the market is by a small group of sellers it can result because of various forms of collusion and lead to the higher cost for consumers the decision of one firm can influence the others because of the small nature of the sellers and vice versa this market form has profit maximization condition for the sellers barriers to entry in these markets are highly high sellers do not allow any new player to come on the market the profits in this market are long run libertarian capitalism this market also known as the white market refers to the broad scope of economic and political philosophies that lay importance on the anti authoritarian aspect of marxism the marketing lays stress on equal development and equal distribution the modern industrial models new deal of united states of america this was the set of economic orders laws and development schemes passed by then president of usa franklin d roosevelt this model was in response to the famous depression of 1930 and was focused on three things relief recovery and reform in detail this model prescribed for relief of unemployed and poor recovery of the economy and reforms the financial system to prevent the repeat of depression in the reforms it laid down strict regulatory bodies that would control the stock market this would help with the money flow in the correct direction the financial institutions will hold greater power and will have the power of intervention it is also directed at the model that unemployed youth will get benefits minimum wages will be based on working hours this model was also in response to the ussr model of communism 20th century liberalism benefits the liberalizing benefits of the modern times offered vast help to the employees not only they dictate how the industry should behave towards the people but they also empower employees to go against the industries they offer a healthy work environment not only they empower the employees sufficiently they also empower the industries this modern model is based on the ideology of liberalism liberalism offered help to everybody some silent features of this model were providing of housing benefits to all the employees whether in the form of actual houses or money it was also decided that industries will take care of the medical benefit of the employees education of the dependent children of the employees will be cared by the industries though the fee will be paid by the employee the industry will ensure that adequate educational institutes are present in the vicinity of the industry this will not only help the employees but it would also help the adjoining areas this model also laid emphasis on the correct implementation of bureaucracy and the problems arising from it it also stated that people should be given chance to join the bureaucracy it also laid emphasis that the bureaucracy should be held responsible the neo liberal market the idea of the market was laid down by frederick hayek and ludwig von mises this model ensures that the free market is the best way of communication of the needs of the society this is known to have great popularity in 1990s this model also lays importance on reducing regulation on large industry this market motivates the buyers as well as sellers through economic returns in 1990s it was a popular model the cooperatives 
cooperatives are based on the principle of Rochdale cooperation. In this principle, the basic ideology is that it is voluntary and free for all. The membership control is democratic with everything decided usually by the members. The members should also participate economically with every penny spent should be recorded. The various departments should be made interdependent and autonomy should be given to them. Adequate information, education and training should be provided to each and every member of the cooperative so that they do not lag behind in any way. The best way that this can be seen is that when a new member joins, he may have expertise in one field but he may lag in other fields. The knowledge transfer helps all departments to raise and handle the issues. Moreover, the cooperative should have a concern for the community. The cooperative has the ideology of common people coming together to form an organization and work together. Hence, these people should also help the community around them. This is a moral responsibility that they should take. Real life examples, the Amul story of India. Amul, a cooperative federation that produces milk is the most successful story of any cooperative organization. The Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation Limited, owned by 2.4 million farmers in Gujarat, owners of the Amul brand have a story of their own. They made India self-sufficient in the field of milk and milk products. Today, Amul milk and other dairy products are throughout the nation with equal delight. Not only has this story inspired other cooperative ventures, but it also encourages small time entrepreneurs to go out of the box and do something new. Moreover, with the setting of Institute of Rural Management in Ahmedabad, people are to become self-sufficient. Rural part in India holds very significant. They are the untapped potential markets that can make all the common masses of India rich. The only thing needed is an honest approach. Industrial sociology has always been and will always be a most interesting subject. In the future, it will influence industries for future prospects. Employees now are as the greatest assets, hence the field of sociology is seeing and bound rise. We should always remember that we are human beings first. Industries, money, profit and other things come afterward. Few points all the industries should always remember is in order to improve industrial relations in all the fields, the industry should have strong and stable union. Mutual trust should be developed between the employees. Workers should be made to participate in the managerial role. All the people working in the industry, whether a simple worker or a manager, should respect each other and mutual accommodation should be a pivotal thing. All the agreements made should be honored to the point. The personal policies made for employee benefit should be sound and have a solid ground standing. Government's role should also be progressive where it should not only increase employee benefit but also help the industries to grow. Only when we have achieved a status where employees are by the industry and employees should respect the industry, only then we can safely assume that we are growing. Marxism, liberalism, communism, all models are based on one sole idea, which is growth of humanity and stop all exploitation.